Hello everybody and welcome to the Noseman YouTube channel. This uh, little tutorial is going to show you how you can create some cloth that is aligned on a spline and can change scale and so forth. I've cached this cloth animation so it scrubs back and forth, but it's a relatively simple process. So buckle up and get ready because as you already know, Noseman knows. So let's begin by going and creating a new project. So in this empty scene, I'm going to go and create a plane. I'm going to turn on my Gross Shading Line so I can see all the polygons that make up our plane. And I'm going to set the width segments to 20. And I'm going to set the height to 200. And I'm going to set it so that it's up right. So I can go and do a plus Z. Fantastic. Now I'm going to make this editable. So I'm going to press C on my keyboard. I'll click on this little button here and I'm going to make it editable. I'm going to call this main cloth. Excellent. Now I know that this is 200 uh, tall, so I'm going to bring it down uh, so that the top is aligned to the floor. I don't need to do that, but it's going to help me do fewer steps in the process. So I'm going to set it to minus 100 so that I'm quite accurate and change my uh, viewport. Excellent. Now, what I'm going to do is go and draw a spline in my top view, which is going to be my guide rail. So let me create a spline pen and let me go here and do a couple of points and create this spline. The good thing with this method is that you can change the spline later on and everything is going to align. So I'm going to press escape and then go to my model mode and select the spline, go back to the 3D view, and here we can see that we have the spline and our main cloth. Now, there are a couple of components here. Number one component is that the cloth itself cannot be pinned to a spline. But what we can do is create a belt that's pinned on this spline. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to make a copy of this by dragging it down, pressing Command or Control on the PC and releasing the mouse button. I'm going to call this belt. Great. Now this belt is only going to have uh, two rows of uh, points. So let me turn off this in my viewport and let me zoom in a bit, bring it over here and I'm going to go to points mode and I'm going to go with my live selection and select all these points up here. I can actually go to one of my front views but anyway I'm too lazy to click one button. I'd rather drag my mouse pressing shift and I want to keep these points, so I'm going to go to the Select menu, invert my selection, and press Delete or Backspace on my keyboard. And this is my belt. Now I want to take this belt and actually deform it, make it move on this spline. So I'm going to use a deformer, and the deformer is the spline wrap. Make the spline wrap a child of the belt, and click on the spline wrap and you can see in the object tab it has the spline link. Let's get my spline and drag it in the spline link and now I have this stretched uh, belt polygon object that is spread across the spline. I need to switch the mode not to fit spline. This forces the object to fit the length of the spline. I want to keep the length and here's my belt. I can use the offset parameter to make it move on the spline and I can use the from to to scale it and we're going to animate these two to make our cloth work as we want it to. Now let me drag the cloth underneath just to make sure. Now there is one more element. We need to align this main cloth to the original position. This is a, I would call it a slight limitation of the cloth system that we need to do this manually rather than the cloth taking its place here. So I'm just going to make a copy of this spline wrap, put it on the main cloth, and you can see that it's aligned exactly the same, but it's aligned at the middle. So I need to do a couple of things on both the belt spline wrap and the main cloth spline wrap. I'm going to select the spline wrap, go to the bounding box, and by moving these numbers here, I can define where the object is going to be. And I'm going to put it around there, and you can see that's zero. Fantastic. I'm going to do the same thing here, just to bring it down slightly so that it aligns with the other two polygons. Now we can't really see the difference between these, so let me fix a few things in the filtering. I'm going to get rid of my grid and my horizon. Great. And then I'm going to create two materials. I'm going to create the red 
material and double click and go in the color and set it to red and I'm gonna make a copy of this call it blue and just go and change this to blue I'm gonna assign the red on the belt and the blue on the cloth so we can see the different polygon objects so let's bring this down so that it aligns again this is not necessary but it's good practice to have things be as accurate as possible now let's select this let's go back to the bounding box center and move this up or down to see where it's going good and again zero would do the job for us so now they're aligning perfectly and because they're overlapping we can't see one of the two but no problem now the next thing I need to do is go to the main cloth now that we've set the original shape right click and say current state to object and this is going to actually take the cloth apply the deformer and then make this into a polygon object delete everything that's unnecessary and keep the main cloth now in its new deformed shape excellent we're nearly there the next step is to set the cloth object as a cloth object right click go to simulation tag let's go to the cloth object so now it's a cloth if I press play you will see that it's gonna fall and now I need to set what is called a belt so I'm gonna select this and go to the points I'm gonna select the same points I have for the belt polygon object again you don't have to do this you can do it with just one row or a couple of points uh, depending how you want your uh, curtain so to speak your cloth to be hanging I want it to be across the whole belt object and uh, what I'm going to do is a right click here and create a cloth belt the cloth belt needs an object to belt the cloth on I'm going to use the belt and when I press set you will see that we have these yellow points these are the points on the belt which the main cloth is attached to and if these two objects are not exactly in the same position you will see yellow lines but that's a subject for another tutorial now if I press play you will see that now my cloth hangs so the simulation is working all I have to do is go to the spline wrap let's set some sort of uh, longer animation time because I like nice slow animations I'm gonna go to the offset parameter of the spline wrap and set it to 0 on frame 0 I'm gonna go to frame 200 set this to 100 percent look at these yellow lines uh, the simulation is not running that's why nothing is happening add the keyframe rewind press play and your cloth is ready to roll isn't that fantastic now let's go and add a few more things to make it look a bit better and then we're going to add the scaling so first of all I'm going to go and create a cloth surface bring it down here make the main cloth a child of the surface it's going to subdivide it to make it uh, a bit higher detail go to the cloth surface and let's add thickness of one that's not going to be really visible but if you go very close you will see that there is a certain thickness associated to this cloth now it makes it look better when you render it and again everything works as expected so let's go to frame uh, 100 and uh, let's go to the spline wrap and set the two which is basically how much it's going to occupy of the original scale because the keep length is uh, set I'm gonna set a keyframe here I'm gonna go to frame let's say 160 I'm gonna set this to 20 percent uh, and add a keyframe and then I'm gonna stretch it back out again to 100 percent over here and add one more keyframe so let's watch what the animation does it's going to move it's going to scale look at that and then it's going to move and expand and everything is working fine now if you want to extend the spline or change the shape that's not a problem because now that we've set the actual settings for what it's going to do I can actually change this and let's move the points here let's go to my move tool and then I'm gonna maximize this so we can see it better press command when you have the move tool and point selection on splines and it will add points and let's go here and add some sort of spiraling thing here excellent and let's go back to our 3d view and look at this wonder of modern technology and there you go we have a cloth aligned to a spline that is moving and scaling and so many other things so that's pretty much it add some lights add some materials and create 
anything you want. And this can work with any kind of cloth object. I hope you enjoyed that. Go to c4dcafe.com. You will find amazing amounts of information and you can get all your answers to all your very intelligent questions. Please remember to subscribe, click on the notification bell and enjoy more tutorials as they come. Rarely. Thanks for watching.